birthday, Winston Churchill. Welcome, one and all, to the KOE Nation as we raise our glasses in a very special toast to one Winston Churchill. I am your King of Stream, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner. Blend Master Tony G, like, share, subscribe. We are here to enjoy some of Winston Churchill's favorite drinks here on his birthday. He was a man who led the United Kingdom through the Second World War, and he did it with quite a bit of alcohol fueling him. He was known as a prodigious drinker. And I don't even have everything that he would normally drink in a day, but I have a few examples. One of the things that he drank every day from the moment he woke up in the morning, Johnny Walker Red Label. And he would have it in a very specific recipe. He didn't have like a two ounce drink. It was very small. When he'd wake up in the morning, he would get... Basically enough to just cover the bottom of the glass. In fact, that's probably... Oh, yeah, that's way too much. Okay. There we go. Just a little more. For science. Yes, this is science, folks. And it would barely cover the bottom of the glass Okay. with Johnny Walker red whiskey, club soda or tonic water, whatever was available that day during the war. And it would be significantly filled up more so. And some folks that knew him kind of jokingly referred to it as mouthwash. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're in the middle of a war and it's a little scarce, I guess this would be a way to do it. So this is the first toast that we're going to do for one Winston Churchill, one of the leaders of the Allied powers during the Second World War. Happy birthday, Mr. Prime Minister. Hmm. Delightfully minty. Very bubbly. It's mostly seltzer water with a little bit of alcohol. It does just to... give you a bit of a pep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's absolutely a early morning well, boozy drink. He also kept a very interesting sleep schedule where... He would wake up in the morning and he would have one of these immediately at eight or nine in the morning okay. with his breakfast. He would go about his day drinking these throughout. At lunchtime, he would have champagne. After lunch, he would have cognac, which we will get to that. Then in the afternoon, he would take a two to four hour nap. Then he would get up, have another Johnny Walker and soda made for him. You know, I could, for a very specific palate, that could be delightful. Um, yeah, not it, it's, terrible. It's not my, oh, wow, you really enjoyed it. Um, not bad. I, and then he would proceed with dinner. He would also have champagne again. So he'd have two full bottles of champagne with every, you know, with every meal. Then he would go on to have more cognac at the end of the night, which I figured... He also was a lover of sherry when it was available. Wasn't the easiest thing to get across the Atlantic during the war. So this is sherry cask age Covassier, which a very fine premium cognac. And Tony is a fan of sherry aged pretty am. much anything. Yeah. Now, unlike a Copita nosing glass for whiskey, with a cognac glass, you actually want to let your hand warm it. And that releases aromas. Okay. There's a distinct coffee smell you're going to get here. Almost a... Uh... Chocolatey. Yeah, like a... One more Johnny like Walker. A Christmassy... Uh... Oh, that strawberry, orange, chocolate fruit. Fruitcake? No, not a fruitcake, but like the... The ball of orange chocolate or strawberry chocolate. Yes. Crack open. Gotcha. Plus yeah, it, a Christmas candy. Brandy. Well. Obviously. <laughs> My wine smells so much like wine. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Well, let's see how this goes down. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, that 
that's good stuff. Wow. That's smooth. Ooh, wow. And like I said, it's got a distinct yeah. coffee flavor in contrast to the way brandy normally tastes. Yeah, that's a mocha flavor through and through, and I like it. And believe it or not, this is actually the least expensive Cavassier offering that you can find. Normally about 40 to 50 bucks, somewhere in there. Ah. Most uh, Cavassier offerings are going to be a bit more, unless you're just getting the VS. So, VSOP is going to be a little bit more. but This is really nice. Yeah, I figured this would be right up your alley. What oh, I yeah. use this for is, I would not drink this after lunch. This would be end of the night drink like if I was you're gonna say getting ready for bed yeah and I've actually done this before just drop one ice cube and one dried mango slice in it and it's just one of the perfect get me to sleep potions if you mm. will like within 45 minutes of drinking that I'm going to bed I can see that, that that's really nice that's mm. so yeah that sherry love that mm. beautiful so, a man who uh, was definitely had a taste for fine liquor, one Winston Churchill. Clearly. <sighs> he, let's be frank, sometimes had to make do with what he had. Like, I say, oh. why specifically Red Label? <laughs> well, back then, I think they only had Red Label and Black Label. Yeah, I, was gonna... I don't know if Blue Label was even a thing. Like, they didn't even have Green Label. Like, I'm sure if Green Label was a thing, that would have probably been Winston Churchill's go-to. But yes, uh, y you had to make do with what you had. And also, you got to remember, Tony, he was the head of state during a major world war. He had to seem like he was a man of the people. I drink Johnny Walker Red, just like all of you. That was a small thing, but a big thing, because he wasn't really known for drinking beer, which... Getting a pint down at the pub is kind of a well-known cultural thing in the United Kingdom. So, he had to connect with them in one way, I imagine. So, and this was a great way. And, uh, you know, better whiskey than it gets re uh, reputation for that's beer. That's fair. You know, honestly, it mixed fairly well with that. So, that's not, not bad at all. But, you know, Tony, I think what we really need to do is... Take your cognac glass up one last time. Raise your glass to one Winston Churchill. Thank you for leading the Allied powers through this incredible war. And we now live in a world that is very much of your creation. Happy birthday, Mr. Prime Minister. So folks, as I'm known to say around here, all that being said, thank you for joining us for this very special toast to one Winston Churchill. I am your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, signing off and handing off to my indomitable broadcast partner. Tony G, thanks for watching.